Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. So first of all, I want to thank every single subscriber, supporter for all the love. We just hit 33,000 subscribers and I couldn't be more grateful. So if you guys are new to the channel, be part of the family, subscribe, share and all that stuff. And if you're coming back for more, let's learn some stuff. So what I wanted to do today is go over some of the ways to reduce the attack surface on your network, on your systems or whatever. I have a few written down, just wanted to go over because, you know, for some stuff that I've been doing on the side, I've been doing this, right? You know, reducing some, some stuff on networks, helping friends out, their companies or whatever, whoever is needing help outside of my work. Because for work, I don't really do this. I just do this more for like helping others. So I have a few things written down. And, um, and another thing before we get into that, actually, I'm going live tomorrow. Today is Saturday. So happy Saturday, folks. Uh, tomorrow is Sunday. I think the tw I don't have my watch on because it's charging. But let me see. What is tomorrow? The 25th, June 25th. So I'll be live with KevTech. Uh, we, we attempted this last Saturday. And you see, if you see my video, StreamYard just took a poop. So I don't know. It didn't work. So yeah. So we're going to go into like six or seven ways to try to reduce your attack surface, right? So when I say reduce the attack surface, this is coming out from the outside world coming into your network, right? So say for an example, you have a web server sitting on the edge of your network. How can you reduce the attack surface? Or maybe, you know, something that's sitting inside your network that maybe you have to, you know, present a VPN connection in order for folks to get in. And the reason why I want to make this, I should have made this two or three years ago when the whole pandemic stuff happened. So, but it is what it is. It's coming around now. So the first thing is block access to administrative portals. What does that mean? So in my, in my uh, thing, I have it. So from the outside internet facing. So say, for example, you have a, a firewall, right? Firewall that's on your network that you get to 10.10.10.1 on your LAN interface, right? When that guy was out to the internet, if it's an actual firewall, like I have an actual firewall, you probably can't see it, it's down there. So if you knew, I don't have it public, I don't have my, my, my router or my firewall accessible through the internet for obvious reasons, this is why I'm making this video. So we want to block access to administer that external facing WAN port on your firewall. Why? Because that reduces the attack surface because now it's unreachable, right? We can make sure that outside security perimeter is locked down as best as we can. So we don't want access to that. Also, we want to block access. This is still number one, right? We want to still have, you want to block access um, for any facing, including HTTP, HTTPS, ping, SSH, SSL, VPN, or Telnet, right? So you don't want any of these things accessible through the internet. There's other ways to manage your firewall. Maybe I'll get into that, you know, another way. But yeah, that's that's something that's uh, that will reduce your attack surface. That's number one. Hopefully, it's not too long of a video. Uh, I have a few written down, so maybe I blob too much. Whatever. Who cares? Skip it. So the next thing is, if you're not using VPN, disable it, right? So sometimes like when I'm investigating or whatever, there's like CVEs out there that, you know, compromises VPN services. So if you're, you know, if you have clients VPNing in, that's obviously you cannot disable that. But if you just have a firewall and you're not using this VPN service, disable it because you don't want to have any compromise utilizing, you know, any kind of VPN uh, features like L2TP, site-to-site -site VPN, uh, remote access VPN, any of these protocols or any of these procedures, disable the VPN service. You don't want this, right? Um, you can do that obviously by, I don't know, depending on the firewall, like I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you how to do it on your firewall. You just have to Google it. But normally, you can make a group. You can make, say, for example, a default allow when 
group to to land, whatever. I don't know. And then you can, you know, have services, remove services like uh, Ike, Net, you know, there's all the service. You can just disable some services. Uh, like I said, you can just do that and do any specifications and limit the site to side VPN. You know, I would recommend permitting VPN services only for certain IP ranges. So say, for example, you have a client or you have a user that's VPNing from their house to your network. If you need VPN service, allow only that source IP. Anything else, drop the traffic. Okay. Going on to number three. So stop exposing office network resources to the internet. What does this mean? So if you don't need any resources internally accessing the internet. So for example, it's risky to configure maybe NAT, network address translation ports, forwarding to any kind of internet facing firewalls. You know, this is pretty much what I wrote down. So for example, some, some examples I wrote down is like a NAS. I have a NAS in my house, a network attached storage. I have cameras in my house. I have a printer. Oh, no, I actually don't have a printer anymore. But uh, maybe you have a webcam. Maybe you have some kind of service, right, that can access the internet. But if you don't need external access to those, to those services, disable it or don't allow access to the internet. Because now if I get... For example, your IP address, right? And if I do a, if I if I compromise that IP and I get inside your network, then I can start doing port scans and network service scans to see what else resides on that network. What you can do is HP3, whatever. You can do an Nmap scan against that whole subnet, and then see what other live devices are on there, and then you can have a field day. But anyhow, so stop exposing you know network resources to the internet. The next one I have here is businesses are stronger. <clears throat> businesses are strongly recommended to use SSL VPN as an alternative, right? So there's obviously a million quadrillion vulnerabilities discovered on any type of VPN service, right? From you know Apollo to Checkpoint to uh, Ubiquity to whatever. There's a, there's so many, right? We can go on and on. Uh, Sonic Wall. And then, uh, so yeah, there's, there's a ton of vulnerabilities discovered on a top brand SSL VPN products, right? So what, what an alternative we can do is secure that remote connection to any company network with Ike V2 plus authentication, which is like MS chat. So it's a better, you know, it's a better alternative than just SSL VPN. So that's what I have here to, for number four. Uh, how many do I have? Six, seven. So the next one is five. So deploy multi-layered defense of security. Uh, so like advanced security firewalls, right? So you can, the objective of this is to pretty much block the cyber kill chain. We learned about the cyber kill chain in some of the try hack me stuff. And if you're not familiar with the cyber kill chain, you can just Google and get some refreshers and learn about it. So we can mitigate threat, threat actors. We can enable IP uh, reputation and IPSs and all this cool stuff that you can implement. And also you can detect and stop uh, port scans. You can stop denial of service attacks, exploits, brute forcing, you know, enabling threat uh, filtering, anti-malware, antivirus, blah, 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 vulnerability. All these advanced features on these firewalls today, these next gen firewalls. So Say for example, if I'm doing a port scan to that external IP, you know, your IP address, excuse me, your service on that firewall that's monitoring that edge of that network will drop that traffic or block it, right? Yeah, man, it's a handful. So, and that's number, that was number four or number five? No, that's number five. That was deploy multiple, multiple uh, multi-layer defense in your events. So the next one, is to back up configurations on a regular basis. You'll, you don't know how many people don't back up their data, including myself. Sometimes I slack with that. Like I have a application that does automatic backups to my NAS and then my NAS replicates to somewhere else in the world. And sometimes I'll forget because if I have my backup running and then I'm trying to save things, it says, you know, it gives me errors or whatever. But anyhow, like backup, 
your configurations. If it's your firewalls, if it's your computers, if it's your, but we're talking about firewalls, right? And here, like, um, so creating a backup enables you to restore the firewall configuration at any time when, God forbid, your firewall crashes. You know, I live in Florida. We have lightning strikes. What if my firewall dies and I lose all the configuration that I did? I would be pretty pissed. So you want to ensure high security configuration. High security configuration backup should be encrypted before you save it into a database. What I meant by that, if you're saving your configs off of your firewall into a you know a raw data set like your your NAS or your hard drive or whatever, make sure it's encrypted because you don't want people getting to your config file and then they know the whole shebang in your firewall. All right, and then, and the last one is pretty much pay attention to security vendors. So what what I meant by that is, say for example, you're you're using Palo Alto, you're using Cisco, you're using Checkpoint, you're using Ubiquity, using, uh, I say Sonic Wall, I don't know. All these kind of firewalls that they have out there, PFSense, all oh, the Sophos, whomever, right? Make sure you pay attention to the vulnerabilities and the recommendations, the patching, the potential cyber attacks that are detected against these uh, vendors. And yeah, that's pretty much, you know, just keep everything up to date and Make sure you can uh, remediate any kind of cyber threats. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I, what I have for today. These are, I guess, seven easy ways to reduce some attack surfaces or your attack surface from your network, your external side. So if you find this informative, let me know. If there's any ones that you want to add, I can go on and on, but I just want to make a quick video for Saturday morning. And I hope you guys find this informative. Thank you so much for checking it out. And if you have any questions, let me know. And until tomorrow morning, if I see you there, I'll see you there. Let's hang out and uh, have a beautiful day and have a beautiful weekend. Thank you.